there are new technologies coming, we have new fuels coming. This plan will guide us in uh, taking advantage of those opportunities. Decarbonization is not an easy feat, it's a culture change. If it wasn't for the Green Voyage project, we wouldn't be this far with our NAP development. We want to enhance resilience in our island communities. Having the National Action Plan helps us to embrace the change and better coordinate ourselves. What we would like is a pathway that will lead us to a sustainable maritime sector that will improve the lives of our people. If there's one thing we learned throughout the journey with Green Voyage is that there's not a single nap that looks like the other. The key is to really find one that is tailored to our needs and tailored to our circumstances. We have to know where we are to know where we're going. And so that's what we're doing right now. We're developing our baseline study, seeing what emission or maritime sector is responsible for. And then we can put better policies and strategies in place to decarbonize them. We are very dependent on ships interconnecting our islands. This National Action Plan is, is devised in a way that will help incentivize the nation as a whole in uh, emission reduction from domestic ships. The most important uh, outcome is that we're going to have a framework, a strategy, a direction on where to focus our efforts. I think the NAP will be a big part of, of our compliance. We know what we need to, to do, the strategy is very clear, and so the NAP would be the stepping stones that we need to achieve to move towards that goal under the IMO and the, and the GSG strategy. The NAP will be able to structure our domestic legislative framework. Um, in that way, we'll be able to centralize the different regulations, and then we'll be able to better monitor, we'll be able to better um, exercise compliance. There are so many obligations uh, that uh, as a country we are, we are supposed to comply with. For example, the IMO 2023 revised greenhouse gas strategy. We are also looking at the Paris Agreement and the national determined contributions. So it will help us to you know, comply with all these international obligations. One of the highlights of having a national action plan is so that Solomon Islands can have access to international projects that would address emission reduction in domestic shippings in the Solomon Islands. My advice to other countries would be think seriously what you want to achieve and think seriously who are the stakeholders that you need to engage. Keep them involved, ensure that they understand what you're doing and that will help the development of your NAP, the development of projects, and help to decarbonize the maritime sector in, in, in your countries. You have to have the, those politicians, those big guys, to see the vision, to see the need, and uh, you make them understand uh, that it's important that we have this plan. Now when um, the world is moving away from conventional fields and into alternative fields, this national action plan that we are developing would help us in achieving that goal. The world is changing. We don't want to be left behind. The transition itself, it, it will be very costly. And it's only through the map that we can prioritize our strategic actions and the way forward. If like us, the concept of a NAP is pretty new, so the earlier you are able to engage and explain the purpose and the objective of this project, the earlier it is that you will get everybody on board to kickstart the project.